is a great pleasure to welcome Rat Boys. How are you doing? Great. Good, great. yeah. How are Very you? Good. So you were saying earlier that you've wanted to play Primbera Sound for a while. And yeah. tonight, that dream comes true. Tonight's the night. We're the bell of the ball. <laughs> Cross it off the list. <laughs> night, <laughs> night one, Barcelona. Are you excited? We're so excited. <laughs> we love this city and it's the most beautiful place on earth. It's the first time you're playing here in Barcelona? So? Technically the second time. We played like a very small dive bar in 2016, but um, it's been a long time. So we've, this is something we've been talking about in the office for a while, right? And Sergi's probably going to kill me for bringing it up. But I'm going I'm to do it. So like, when I first heard your name over many years ago, I was expecting something a bit kind of punky and filthy and nasty. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't like that at all. And is, that, is that something you get quite a lot? Or Yeah. I mean, it's punky and nasty if uh, in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, you, know? you got to see us live. Right. Tonight, you'll see. But that, that was definitely like a thing playing our first shows. People would put us on bills with the crustiest like <laughs> st- street punk bands or like harsh noise bands. Yeah, we, we started playing shows before streaming was really a thing. And so people would just judge us based on our name, not knowing anything about what our music sounded like. So we ended up on a lot of pretty heavy, hardcore bills at the beginning. And what did you do? Did you like, all right, it's time for you know, wild thing or something. No, we just we just played our normal music. And back then, if you can believe it, I played an acoustic guitar well, live. So it was even softer. And um, I will tell you this, though. I think the hardest punks love an acoustic set. I think, I think we don't give people enough credit. It's a good for, reprieve. Yeah, yeah. A little variety. And every, nice. every punk band, when they get like older, that the, the foreman always like has his side project being totally. an acoustic one. So oh, it's, yeah. it's true. I mean, You've been called Rad Boys. Are you that fan of the Simpsons? Because I always think when I when I think about a Rad Boy, I think of Bart yeah. Simpson like biting the, yes. <laughs> the it's, door. It's a Who beautiful forget, thing. Forget, dear Rad Boy. Forget. <laughs> yeah, no, we love the Simpsons. I Rat Boy is my high school nickname, uh-huh. and so I. I I didn't know about the Simpsons rap boy and the Bart Simpson rap boy until later. <laughs> I, I don't want to be rude and feel free to utterly ignore this question. <laughs> but oh, where does that come from? I, I don't know. To this day, I, I don't know. Um, my friends just called me that for no reason. And, well, maybe there is a reason and they never told me. <laughs> well, you guys wrote like a little operetta it at be- the lunch table. Yeah. yeah, everyone had nicknames, right? Everyone had nicknames. That was mine. It just became this inside joke and we we created a whole rap boy persona. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it lives on. Can so, we know the other nicknames? No. I don't think they're safe. <laughs> they're, they're <laughs> disgusting. You'll they're be banned on Twitch. Not safe for work. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I said my colleague had been writing some pretty weird questions. <laughs> Uh, I, I've got I've got one, which I'm pretty sure is his work. And maybe it's your work, Sergio. We'll see. Uh, all right. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> is there something about the nature of rats and society's rejection of these animals that you identified with, with as a group? Were you outsiders? That's a great question. <laughs> oh, that, no, that was mine, that one. Okay, you're right. Oh, okay. Yeah. oh yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. You um, read that rat book, Julia. I, yeah, I, I have actually studied the ecology of city rats kind of extensively. Um, I think they're beautiful, like in the way that rats really value their routines and their um, (coughs) family structure. Um, I I identify with that for sure. I don't know. I don't know if we were necessarily outsiders ever. If anything, maybe Mm. we were Maybe on the hard (laughs) (laughs) corners. Yeah. Nonconformists a little bit, sure. I don't know. Rats are a good mirror of society, though. Yeah. Too, so it's like, you know, you see yourself in the rat. I like the idea of like paying attention. And once you start like really focusing on your surroundings, you see rats all the time. And I think that's kind of beautiful. We're everywhere. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, funnily enough, you've, you've kind of, um, you're not quite everywhere yet, but you've been like, it's been like a real kind of big uh, build for you, know, over the past few years. Like, was there a moment when you're like, oh, we're really onto something here? Maybe this afternoon when we sound checked yeah. on, the, on, <laughs> the big, the on the big yeah. stage. Yeah. About 20 minutes ago when I was sitting with my feet in the pool with an Aperol spritz looking over <laughs> the city of Barcelona. It's very, very <laughs> surreal. Are on the up and up. Yeah, it's just beautiful here. I, I don't know. I mean, it's really just so exciting to get to play shows like 
uh, play new songs, you know. We've put out a lot of records, but we've never had the timing be quite right where we could tour right away on a new album. Um, and so this is our first time getting to do that, and it's been really great, like more than we could have hoped for. So it's exciting. And you've been touring with the Decemberists, is that right? Yeah, yeah. We just got off leg one like two days ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we flew straight You're in. like, okay, last show was like at the Grand Ole Opry, and now we're at Primavera. And the, that's like just so wild. The Grand Ole Opry, okay, legendary country music venue. Yeah. I mean, there, there is something country to, well, I would say there's something country to your music, right? Oh, bit. definitely, oh, yeah. yeah. Some twang. We all kind of grew up with like our moms playing country radio too. Shania <laughs> so, Twain. Shania Twain. Yeah. Cheryl Crow. The chicks. Cheryl. <laughs> yeah. Was it a pretty intimidating place to play though? Honestly, no. I was, well, at least that's how I felt. Yeah, it just I felt, felt special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's very small, very intimate. And so I was preparing myself to feel intimidated, but I actually felt extremely kind of at peace mm-hmm. there. And it sounds so good. The room sounds so good. So you're playing, I might have got this wrong, but uh, <laughs> you're playing a sort of hometown gig this summer because you are going back to Bend. Is that mm. right? Because there's, yeah. there's, there's several Bend. Like, uh, you're you oh, playing one Bend. Oh, yes. so this has got me slightly confused. Oh, South, South Bend. Bend. Yeah. So, oh, uh, Bend, God. Oregon is very far away <laughs> from where we live. Oh, yes. damn it. Right. I didn't know how many Bends there were. Yeah. Like, Julie and Dave went to college in South Bend. Indiana. In Indiana. Indiana. Which is like... Actually, east. <laughs> oh, it's what? north and east. South Bend is east of Bend. But uh, I, we've I never we've never been to well, <laughs> Bend is in the west. Yeah, yeah. Bend is very far west. It's a beautiful city. Yeah, I've heard. We've never actually been there. They should have called it West Bend. West Bend. Bend. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> I told them to. They uh, didn't listen. I'm, I'm catching up. Talking talking of big moments. Um, <laughs> in 2020, you got a shout out from Bernie Bernie Saunders. Yes. At a campaign rally. What? What was that about? Was he using your music or something? Yeah, he was totally using our music. No. <laughs> um, Dave, and I, Dave and I got to play at one of his political rallies in Iowa uh, shortly before the Iowa caucuses um, in the 2020 election. It was maybe the coolest thing. That might be the, the answer to your question about, like, we're doing something right. The fact that we kind of cosmically ended up there. And one of the coolest things about that whole experience was just seeing how his team worked because it's very DIY. It reminded us of like a DIY basement show or something because it was just very like everyone was on the same team. There weren't any egos really. Yeah, you just no saw frills. all the parts come together. Yeah, no frills. Like, and we were, it was like we got to headline the Bernie Sanders basement show. It was like, really cool. Do you want to pl- play and we'll bring the PA and we'll figure it out? <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, is he a fan of your music? I mean, did he, did he well, come no, in? I so, hope. Well, maybe. Gosh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> I don't know. But The shout out, I think, is something he always does. I mean, I think he has a uh, lot of respect for musicians yeah. and like people like in the gig economy mm-hmm. stuff like that. There it's was a, some uh, secret punks working on the Bernie Sanders. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. He's known for having quite a good taste on music, right? Mm-hmm. I suppose. Well, I mean, the guy that was running his campaign events, at least in that part of the country, used to play in a band that we had played shows with uh, in like punk venues and stuff. And so, yeah, his campaign like events planner was an old punk kid. And so that's how we got hooked up with them. I mean, to take things back to South Bend. No, I've got, I think I've got this right. <laughs> Where you formed. Yes. Um, you met at college. I mean, was that, was that like a very nurturing way of forming a band? Like, I mean, is it, is it a good place, you know, yeah, to make music and to, to experiment? I think so. Yeah, I was nurturing. I mean, I, one thing that sticks out is like there weren't many other musicians at college like that were into the kind of rock and roll thing we were doing. You know, there's the orchestra and everything. But um, you kind of just had to... I, I like played in a couple punk and hardcore bands uh, in the Chicago Burbs, where I'm from, where me and Sean are from. And um, we kind of... Like took that and we're like, okay, if we want to keep doing stuff like that, we gotta find it on our own. So we we started playing a lot of you know little regional shows, Central Michigan, or uh, you know going to Champaign, for instance. Yeah, South Bend is a pretty small city. There's not a ton of stuff happening all the time, so it was kind of nice to be able to just blend right into that community and not worry about selling tickets or like we didn't have social media accounts for the first four years that we were playing music. You know what I mean? Like we weren't trying to. We didn't have any goals or expectations really as far as like 
getting somewhere. It was nice to just play music together. Do you, do you think that helped that you just didn't really mind about, you know, being a success or crossing over to people? You just kind of did your own thing. Oh, definitely. I yeah. So I think that's like the number one piece of advice I would offer young musicians is if you can enjoy playing music with your bandmates in an empty room, you're going to have a hard time being disappointed if no one comes to your shows <laughs> for the first few yeah. years. It's good step one. <laughs> yeah, like we we just love, we really enjoyed each other's company from the get-go, and so it's been smooth sailing from there. That helps, you know. Would you say uh, The Window, which was released August 2023, is a sort of more rock album? Yes. I think it rocks. It rocks. It rolls. It rolls sometimes. Sometimes. Too. Yeah, it's it's definitely maybe more uh, like immediate in how it sounds, uh, like top to bottom. We recorded it live to tape, which was really fun. And I think we were pretty locked in as a band. We like rehearsed those songs a lot going into the studio. So I get really kind of quite big uh, The Breeders vibes. And I love The Breeders. So oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, well, I, but it was also, it was like the longest time you've ever spent in the studio, right? Yeah, we yeah. were there for like a month, pretty much. And did that really change it? I think so. It's like yes and no. Because, yeah. you know, we recorded live on the floor most of the takes. So we had like a really good, you know, 80% representation uh, a week in. And then uh, we had lots of time to just like play around and refine it, which helped a lot of songs. Like it's alive. Like some songs were like, oh, this needs a haircut or this needs like, I need to sleep on this and wake up and like fiddle around with it. Yeah. But yeah. maybe when you're when you're having like this match of time for recording an album, it's like, yeah, maybe I don't think this is good. It's like, no, it's fine. Make exactly. it a little bit difficult of that. time. I think it was the perfect amount of time to where we weren't second guessing because we had too much time, mm -hmm. but we had enough time where, like Dave said, if something wasn't feeling quite right, we could give ourselves the night to come in the next day mm -hmm. and try it again. It was it was a really good balance. For us, it was right. We were able to chase every rabbit hole we wanted to. Yeah, you know? and not overdo it too. Like we went up to the final day recording. Um, and yeah, we, ne we never like spent too much time on a song, I don't think. Could I just say, please don't do my bloody Valentine and spend 20 years on the next <laughs> one. <That'll> be... <laughs> Is that what they were doing? <laughs> <laughs> who, who knows what they were doing? <laughs> um, do you have to wait for the tape to degrade that long? Though? Exactly. Yes, yes. yes. Sounds better. <laughs> so, um, can you tell us about the, the the title track of the album? There's um, there's a very moving story behind it. Yeah, I, yeah, that song, uh, the window is like a very, it's a physical thing. It's not really a metaphor. It goes into the story of my grandpa saying goodbye to my grandma, who was kind of in her final moments. Uh, and this was in the summer of 2020, so people couldn't really be together in. Uh, close proximity and she was living in a nursing home and so uh yeah he was able to arrange with the nursing home workers to she was living on the ground floor so he was able to just walk up and they opened a window and they kind of had like their big goodbye um and yeah she and she passed away a few hours later and it, my mom told me this story I wasn't there in person to witness this but um yeah when my mom called and told me like you know broke the news and told me the details of that it just uh I kind of, it really moved me. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to memorialize that. One thing I find very interesting about it is it's a very specific tale. Yeah. But kind of um, is very moving generally. I mean, is that something you, how do you stand on sort of specificity? Yeah. It's, it's something I try not to think about too much because I feel like that could really get in the way when songwriting because you want something to be relatable, but also... You want to be honest and like, uh, you know, I found it e much easier to write from experience. And so I, for with this, it was just something that immediately felt so uh, urgent, like I, I needed to write it down. And so I didn't really stop and let myself think about that. But uh, oddly enough, you know, we started playing that song on tour right after we recorded it. And before it was released, obviously, and everyone, uh, every night that we would play that song, people would come up and kind of share similar experiences or just say that they could actually relate to that song. And it, it kind of blew my mind. Um, and so, yeah, it, it feels really nice to be able to connect with people that way. It's a sort of great COVID song, 
you know. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah. I'll live through it. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh. Um, and so you're off to, after this, you're off to the UK, is that right? That's right. Mm. Have you have you toured outside much before? So kind of internationally? Yeah, a, a decent amount. We actually did like two tours in Europe and the UK that were like straight up like DIY punk tours. And then we did, we did a big tour opening for Julian Baker in 2022, mm. um, six weeks in Europe. That was a big one. And yeah, that's the one where we started playing the window live and people were resonating with it. So. so it's nice to be back. We like it over here. Yeah, we were just there in November too. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's certainly um, a real pleasure to have you here. Um, you're playing tonight at 7.35. On the dot. Yeah. On the dot. <laughs> be there, or be square. And there's no way to say where it is because there's only one place it can be it's over there. It is a big stage yeah. and I suspect there's going to be quite a lot of uh, a lot of people there. We'll see. Oh, yeah. We'll see. Rat boys, neither rats nor boys. But uh, <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Thanks for thank having you. us. Thank you. Appreciate it.